So this is the second lecture in theme three, architecture documentation in 2D604 software architecture course. The focus of this uh, lecture is, is uh, on models, architecture models, because it's extremely important that uh, you, when you define your viewpoints, uh, choose the right models, because the models are, are, are the means of communication with the stakeholders. So uh, the big question here is is what models should you use in, in your your viewpoints and and uh, model uh, in, in in when you create the views and there are many important aspects uh, that you need to consider in order to, to find the right answer to to this uh, first and foremost. Well, as I said, models are about communication, so they should be used to communicate. And you have to consider whom you're communicating with. Is it is it uh, uh, a uh, non-expert in the soft, uh, software area, or is it an expert? Is it a domain expert in uh, a non-software domain? Um, you have to be extremely cautious and 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 uh, picky when you when you select your models because uh, um, a good model uh, which is not understood by a stakeholder is per definition a bad model so if you think about architecture decisions uh, there are a couple of, of classes of, of uh, classes of decisions that you would like to communicate and uh, the first one is a structure uh, for example a decomposition uh, how you decided to to decompose your system uh, the first level into two subsystems for instance uh, the second type is behavior behavior models uh, that uh, models how the system behaves uh, at different levels. Uh, it could also be uh, different levels of details and also the abstraction you use, uh, abstractions you use in the, the models are, are different. So it can be anything from a, a high level communication down to, to state machines. The third class is covering or including models that we use to argue you know the a part a large part of of the architecture uh, is the rationale the information that uh, is used by others to understand where you motivate where you where you argue that this decision or these decisions are actually the best decisions available so argumentation is a is a large part of, of the documentation and, and uh, as we will see there are uh, dedicated models for, for this so if you look at structure and behavior um, you have to to think about uh, well that models should be understandable because if you have to spend lots of time explaining the meaning of the model what the boxes and what the lines uh, mean well then you have to spend a lot of time on, on uh, things that could have been spent more efficiently to, to discuss the actual decisions the model describes so we should look for something that is widely used and and uh, the models for structure and behavior, they should be purposeful, they should be uh, at the right level, communicate the things we want to communicate. So, to conclude, well, they should be good enough. Uh, we, there is never a perfect model, uh, there is always something missing, but, but they should be good enough to, to cover all the aspects that we would like to communicate. Uh, UML, the Unified Modeling Language. Well, uh, what you see here is a, a 
domain model for UML. So we have the diagrams at the top and you can see that there are two types of, of diagrams in UML. There are structure and there are behavioral diagrams. And uh, the uh, candidates in, in UML are, are many and, and it means that it is fairly straightforward to find a purposeful widely used, good enough, understandable diagram in, in this family. Uh, not always perfect, but, but uh, good enough. So, uh, if you look at the structure diagrams for a start, well, uh, what we have looked at uh, in, in this uh, course so far is the component diagram and the deployment diagram uh, but you can use class diagrams objects diagrams package diagrams composite structure diagrams well all these diagrams are useful as as uh, for the models in in um, some uh, views some are of course more widely used like component diagrams where others are are not as as, as uh, widely used, but but still, uh, if you look into these diagrams, uh, get a basic grip on them, understand them a bit, you can actually use them uh, in in many different modeling situations where you want to to uh, communicate structure. The second class, the behavior diagrams, well. Uh, use case diagrams and activity diagrams. I believe that you have uh, seen these use case diagrams uh, to, to model high level functionality for, for various stakeholders. Uh, you can use the activity diagrams to, to model the flow of events uh, that uh, describes the inners of the, the use case. So what could happen if a uh, user uh, initiates the use case and uh, then we have various uh, object level uh, and uh, diagrams in the interaction diagrams sequence diagrams for instance uh, and communication diagrams uh, a little bit of uh, overlap there but but uh, is used to to communicate uh, which objects are involved in a transaction and the communication that may happen in between. Um, then we have more uh, specific diagrams like timing diagrams and state machine diagrams. They could be useful for, for depicting low-level mechanisms in, in, in a system. For instance, you remember that one of the concerns could be deadlock freeness. Well, in order to, to prove deadlock freeness, you may find a state machine uh, very useful. So the third type uh, of diagrams is the diagram uh, is the argumentation diagram. Uh, and argumentation, well, try to, to uh, communicate the rationale or why we decided to do a certain thing. Sometimes, or I should say, quite often you have to convince you have to convince your your uh, fellow uh, architects or other engineers in a project to to uh, that the decisions you made or the decisions you suggest are the right ones and uh, the best way to do that is of course to provide some kind of uh, evidence or or uh, uh, proof that that your uh, your uh, decisions are the right ones are the best ones in comparison to others so uh, sometimes you can use a mathematical model or analytical model uh, in your argumentation you can make calculations you can uh, provide answers to uh, specific questions uh, to support your design decisions and and um, for instance, you can calculate, you can, or you can come up with a, a model of a system, and you can uh, use that model to to estimate the performance of that model. 
and and then you can do that for a couple of uh, alternative decompositions and then you can pick the west best one and uh, there are other types of models uh, that you can use you can use uh, rely uh, use it for real reliability models or safety models where you use probabilities to to calculate the overall probability that something should go wrong and and uh, then you can add things in your system to reduce those probabilities which makes it less likely that some mishap will eventually uh, happen uh, Sometimes it's uh, too complex to, to come up with a, a uh, analytical model with a comprehensive analytical model. So, uh, in, and in those cases, you have to fall back to, to simulations. And simulations can be extremely uh, detailed and, and very precise. So, so it's not a bad choice at all. Uh, but the difference here is that you actually have something that executes. So you have built a model of a system and, and then you let this system model execute and uh, hopefully this uh, model or the executing system behaves like the system it simulates and, and by that you can, you can uh, uh, check different uh, values, you can measure and, and by that you can come up with uh, evidence or proof for your, your claims that you make for your, uh, in your design decisions. And as you see, you can make simulations for performance and you can make simulations for reliability. So just because we saw that we could use analytical models for these, well, simulation models are also fine. Uh, because sometimes the com uh, complexity of the system is so large that it is impossible to come up with a, a reasonable analytical model. Um, the third type is a pure argumentation model. Um, what you see here is, is a model where you can connect different arguments, different uh, uh, activities, different uh, artifacts that you have developed in order to address a certain concern. So uh, this can be used to decompose, decompose your argumentation. So, so for, see for, if we look at the, the diagram in, uh, on the right hand side, you can see that, that S1 is to limit access. So, so there is some decisions needed uh, in order to limit the access to a system. And that is divided up into two um, uh, aspects. First, limit data access, and second, limit access to, to other resources. And uh, the limit data access is further decomposed into two additional uh, statements that we should limit access for authentication sessions and limit access to authorization data. Uh, okay, but on the right hand side you can see that well for the limit access to resources we have introduced a goal and a goal is fairly similar to a requirement uh, so we have a goal, ensure that users and subjects will not monopolize a controlled resource. That means that we should have some mechanism in our system that prohibits users to uh, get access to a resource and then keep that access forever and never release it. Um, that goal can be partially reached by the second goal that is to to uh, introduce minimum and maximum quotas uh, to improve resource utilization so we can build these argumentation structures and, and we can argue that uh, for authorization yes we use this uh, 
single sign-on mechanism. We have uh, this type of um, encryption. So we can combine the argumentation uh, statements with references to models, uh, to structure, behavior, but also to other argumentation models. We can uh, have analytical, we can have simulation models, we can have a verification, validation, that is uh, uh, results from tests. So, so it's more or less anything that can be used as an argument to convince a stakeholder that the decisions we plan to make or have made are sufficient to meet a, a architectural requirement. So what's extremely important here is to remember that you used to write models to communicate to your stakeholders. So be very selective. Don't create too many models. Uh, check your models continuously with your stakeholders to make sure that they are relevant for them, that they are understandable by them, and that they communicate what they want. So that was uh, the second lecture of the uh, third theme here. And uh, now we move on and start to, to look at uh, design of architectures, uh, patterns, and tactics.